Hi, my name is Corey, and I'm a registered dietitian and senior nutrition educator at the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. In today's video, we will be talking about diabetes and approaches to staying healthy while living with diabetes. This video contains general nutrition information and should not be used as a replacement for individualized medical advice and guidance. If you or someone you love is living with diabetes, please stay tuned for resources on how to access appropriate care. Now, on to an interview with Erin, a registered dietitian and the Community Nutrition Manager at the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. Hi, Erin. Hey, Corey. So can you explain to us what diabetes is? Sure. Diabetes is a group of metabolic disorders that causes your blood glucose or blood sugar to be higher than it should be and prevents your body from being able to properly use the energy it gets from food and beverages. Okay, and so what are the different types of diabetes? Sure, there are three different types of diabetes. Type one diabetes is an autoimmune condition that usually develops in childhood. It, this, in this condition, the body doesn't produce insulin. In type two diabetes, the body still makes insulin, but the cells no longer respond normally to it. This is referred to as insulin resistance. And in gestational diabetes, it's a diabetes that occurs while a person is pregnant. Okay, thank you for explaining that. So what can people do to prevent diabetes if they're concerned about getting it? Well, because type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition, there isn't anything an individual can do to prevent it from occurring. But if someone has a family history of type 2 diabetes and they are concerned about the risk of developing this form of diabetes, there are certainly ways to do that. For one, maintaining regular visits with your doctor is essential. Your primary care doctor or general practitioner can run, run lab tests to monitor your blood glucose levels and give you information on your risk or provide a diagnosis if you are to develop diabetes. Lifestyle is also hugely important for prevention of type 2 diabetes. Staying active, eating a balanced diet, getting adequate sleep, and managing stress are all key factors in reducing the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It's also helpful to work on reducing behaviors such as smoking and alcohol use. Okay, so you mentioned lab tests. What are the type of tests that people have to get to see if they have diabetes, and what are the levels that would tell someone whether they have diabetes or not? So there are different ways to measure blood glucose levels. There's a fasting glucose, which is when the blood glucose is tested before eating anything. Then there's a random glucose test, which is performed any time of the day, regardless of whether or not someone's eaten anything. And then there's a hemoglobin A1C test. And this measures how much glucose has attached to the hemoglobin in your blood for the past three months. Basically, it gives a general idea of how your blood glucose has been over a period of time. So you might be diagnosed with diabetes if your fasting glucose is 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher, if your random glucose is 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher, or if your hemoglobin A1C is 6.5% or higher. Prediabetes may be diagnosed if the fasting gluc blood glucose is between 100 and 125 milligrams per deciliter, if random glucose is 140 to 199 milligrams per deciliter, or if hemoglobin A1C is between 5.7 to 6.4%. But people should always clarify with their doctor what their blood results mean and ask questions if they don't understand what certain values are. Okay, so thanks so much for that information. Um, can you tell us more about the Diabetes Initiative at CFBNJ and the Diabetes Foundation? Sure, the Diabetes Initiative, it's also known as Food, Health, and Hope, just started its fifth year. It's a collaboration between the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, Summit Healthcares, and 13 food pantries selected from CFBNJ's network. The program provides people with prediabetes, diabetes, hypertension, and obesity with monthly diabetic-friendly food boxes and fresh produce. We also provide monthly uh, education sessions that focus on nutrition and disease management, and monthly support from additional resources like podiatry, optometry screenings, and quarterly medical screenings that monitor A1C, BMI, and blood pressure. The program serves to fill the gap for this specialized population that might find it difficult to manage their medical condition um, through their food pantry. So too often the food charitable food system 
is not appropriate for people who are managing diabetes or the distribution sites aren't equipped to offer a client choice model that would allow visitors to select the foods that meet their dietary needs. So we also partner with the Diabetes Foundation and they serve as a resource regarding medical supplies, diabetes specific nutrition information, recipe development and transportation for pantry clients. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was really great to learn more about diabetes and the work that CFBNJ is doing to help provide diabetic resources to the community. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye. Bye. Thanks again to Erin for joining us today. Now that we know what diabetes is, let's discuss ways you can stay healthy while living with diabetes. Firstly, make sure to always follow up with your healthcare team to discuss individualized approaches you should take. Having a well-balanced diet is essential while living with diabetes. Skip the fad diets and instead opt for a balance of all food groups, focusing on fiber-rich plant foods and good sources of protein, which have both been shown to help with blood glucose control. Fiber, also referred to as roughage, is a type of carbohydrate that can be found in foods such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, and legumes. Think of it as a broom that sweeps your intestines. Protein-rich foods include animal-based products such as poultry, seafood, meats, and dairy, as well as plant-based foods such as beans, nuts, and soy-based products like tofu and tempeh. You can use my plate as a guide to help build balance in your meals that reflects your personal preferences, cultural traditions, and budgetary considerations. Try focusing on fiber-rich fruit and veggies by filling half your plate with them. Add extra fiber to your meals by making half your grains whole grains, such as whole grain or whole wheat, pastas, breads, and cereals. Fill a quarter of your plate with protein-rich food and add extra protein by adding low-fat dairy products to your meals. When choosing snacks, aim to combine protein and fiber. Here are some examples of snacks that contain both fiber and protein. An apple with peanut butter. In this example, the apple contains fiber and the peanut butter contains protein. Whole wheat crackers with low-fat cheese where the crackers will provide fiber and the cheese will provide protein. Yogurt with berries, where the yogurt will be the source of protein and the berries will add fiber. Exercise has also been shown to help with blood glucose control. If you're living with diabetes, try finding movement that is realistic and sustainable so you engage in it more often. Think about ways to engage in physical activity that is safe, comfortable, and enjoyable. When possible, Aim for 30 minutes of aerobic activity most days of the week. This might include walking, biking, or dancing. Aim for resistance exercise, such as weightlifting, calisthenics, or yoga, two to three times per week if able. Most importantly, meet yourself where you're at and start with small, achievable goals. Try breaking up long periods of sitting, such as in front of a computer or television, with standing or taking short walk breaks. These small changes can add up over the long run. Diabetes is a complex medical condition that requires individualized care. Always be sure to discuss dietary changes with your healthcare team. If you or a loved one is looking for more information on diabetes, consider visiting the following websites. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel or visit NewJerseySnap.gov.